and I welcome the announcement that G7 countries will donate 870 million vaccine doses, primarily through COVAX. This is a big help, but we need more, and we need them faster. So for months, Canada was under scrutiny for being the only G7 nation to dip into the COVAX vaccine supply. COVAX helps distribute vaccines more equally around the globe. Prime Minister Justin Trudeau said Sunday that Canada would donate 13 million doses of surplus shots and pledged money to buy 87 million more. Minister of International Development uh, Karina Gold is uh, coming on the program now. Thank you very much and welcome to the program. Thanks, David. Great to be with you. So I understand the Prime Minister is committed to donate 13 million doses as part of this pledge. So which doses and, and when can they expect them? Yeah, so we are donating, as you said, 13 million doses, uh, about 1.4 million of uh, J the Janssen vaccine, uh, just over 7 million of Novavax, and just over 4 million of the AstraZeneca vaccine. Uh, these are all doses that uh, we have purchased through COVAX that would have been destined for Canada, but that we are donating back to COVAX so that they can be distributed. The AstraZeneca vaccines will happen you know, in the immediacy as those vaccines are currently being distributed by COVAX um, and the J&J &J and Novavax uh, vaccines will happen as they come online uh, through production. Okay, so did I get the number right? 1.3 million immediately and then the others will follow in the future? Closer to 4 million immediately. Four, yeah. Closer to 4 million immediately, okay. Yeah. Um, and, and the remainder, when are they, you know, you say in terms of production, that's what it's contingent on, but are, I mean, are we looking at something like in the next three months or can those needy countries, countries in need find themselves, uh, you know, waiting for a year? Well, it will be contingent on production. I mean, as we know, there have been some vaccine uh, manufacturers that have been able to ramp up production faster than others. And so it's kind of as soon as those vaccines are produced, uh, they'll go into the COVAX facility. What's the thinking on um, this many at this point and not more, not less? How do you settle on this number? Well, so from Canada's perspective, uh, you know, we've been very clear that as excess doses are available, mm -hmm. we would be donating them. And so these 13 million are excess to the needs that we have in Canada right now. And so it was that that's why we made the decision for these 13 million. As we continue moving through our vaccine uh, program here in Canada and more vaccines come online through bilateral deals that we've uh, entered into, uh, there's very much a possibility that we'll be donating uh, even more vaccines into the future. So as the Prime Minister said on Sunday, this is very much a first step in terms of our vaccine donation to developing countries. What does excess mean here? Excess means uh, excess to the needs of Canadians. So as you know, we've had really good and uh, successful vaccine rollout here in Canada. Canadians are rolling up their sleeves and in record numbers. We're starting to get through to second doses. And so as we get to, you know, that objective of getting Canadians uh, fully immunized, mm -hmm. we'll have doses that are surplus to our needs here in Canada, and we will be donating those. But I guess I'm, what I'm getting at is how do you figure out what excess is? Um, so we lead the OECD in terms of first doses. We're near the bottom of the OC, OECD when it comes to second doses. And yes, that's rapidly going up or looks set to rapidly go up. But is it a question of these doses are literally ones we don't have capacity in the provinces and the territories to put into arms, or they are more than we will ultimately need? Uh, I think it's a bit of both, right? In the sense that, you know, we're going to get a po to a point where every Canadian who wants to be fully immunized will be. And so we won't be bringing in, you know, new vaccines into Canada, but we want to ensure that those vaccines get into the arms of people around the world. Um, and then there's also, you know, vaccines that are not figuring prominently right now in our domestic rollout. So we're relying quite heavily on Moderna and Pfizer. And, you know, we did uh, have a rollout of AstraZeneca. And so there's not going to be as much of a need for different um, uh, manufacturers of vaccines coming into Canada because we will have already done first and second doses with, with particular products. Uh, I, I want to uh, just bring up for our audience some of the um, latest Angus Reid polling, and it shows that most Canadians want COVID completely dealt with in this country 
uh, before moving on to donating. So, for instance, 72% of Canadians are of the opinion that until all willing residents 12 and up have received their jabs, the country should focus on efforts at home. Uh, younger people, age 18 to 34, slightly more inclined to say the time has come to pivot to sharing vaccines. When I, you know, I know you can't see this uh, this graphic that the rest of us are looking <laughs> at right now, but I, I, you know, government certainly do their own polling, plenty of it. Has this factored into your decision, knowing that, you know, at least this poll is showing many Canadians would rather see the effort sorted at home before dealing with abroad? Well, I guess what I would like to reassure Canadians is that the doses that we're talking about that were announced on Sunday will not have any impact on our domestic vaccine rollout. Um, and the other thing that I would say is that, you know, I've said this for over a year now, is that we're not going to get the pandemic under control even in Canada if we don't deal with it around the world. And so while our absolute top priority as the government of Canada is to ensure that Canadians are vaccinated, that we roll out this immunization program fully, we also recognize that if the pandemic is raging in other parts of the world, that means there's an even greater opportunity for new variants of concern to to come into existence that you know we would be worried about here in Canada. So we are absolutely focused on this domestic rollout and I have to say incredibly impressed by Canadians rolling up their sleeves, signing up, uh, you know, here in Ontario, a lot of people signed up for their second doses today, a very exciting day. But we also recognize that this is something that we can't just, you know, deal with here in Canada. And so that's why we've been such a strong financial uh, supporter of COVAX, for example, and why you know Sunday's announcement of those excess doses was really important. And as those, as you know, we get to the point where Canadians are fully immunized, and and I mean, at a point, you know, we're going to have enough vaccines for two doses of, of every Canadian. We don't need more than that. So, so let me jump in. I mean, I hear what you're saying. Let me just yeah. jump in on you to ask, um, you know, you're, you're selling the point about why it is important to donate abroad. And there's somewhere in the area of 3 billion people on this planet who will need a vaccine and don't have, because of the country in which they live, easy access to it. Mm -hmm. So 13 million is what Canada is donating right now. What about the rest of the people? Well, I mean, Canada's not going to do this all by ourselves, mm -hmm. right? Um, that's why the G7 announcement was so important, you know, 2 billion vaccines. But also, I mean, so we announced 13 million and an actual in-kind vaccine donations. But that's in addition to, you know, the over 80 million that we are helping COVAX purchase through our financial contributions. So, you know, we have to remember that there is a, a mechanism that is purchasing vaccines for developing countries that Canada helped create. We've been one of the strongest supporters um, and donors of, and there's also in tandem uh, us donating excess vaccines. So there's both of those things happening because as you said, you know, there are a lot of people around the world who live in countries where um, their country may not be able to purchase vaccines on their behalf. And we recognize that we need to fight this COVID-19 virus here at home, but also right around the world. Minister Gould, thank you very much for your time this afternoon. Thank you so much, David. Hi, I'm Vashi Capello's host of Power in Politics. See more of our show by subscribing to the CBC News Channel or click the link for another video.